those types of backs, you need one. You need one, don't you? You yeah, have to even have Even if you're going away from like grounded pound, like you need a bigger dude. You need a goal line back. Like you, you can have that. Gadgety, uh, pass catcher. Yeah, quick twitch. Sure. I, I'll call them quick twitch because gadgety pass catcher. I feel like connotations come with that, and I'm not trying to be insulting because I think they're both good at what they are. I think that's a. Va I, I think we should take the connotations away from gadgety pass catcher. That is such a big part of NFL offenses these days. I it's mean, Marshall, necessity. Marshall Falk was that, wasn't he? Greatest show on turf. Yeah. Wasn't that kind of what he sure. was? Now he could stick his nose up in there every now and then, but his real threat was. Yeah, you got to smell it every now and then, Jessica. His real threat was out of the backfield because you couldn't cover him with linebackers. Again, right. you need one of those. Do you need two? Do you need two? <laughs> Are they trying to do something different? Mm. Is this the equivalent mm. of, like, the Timberwolves going with two massive dudes in Gobert and Towns and the Titans are trying Listen, to as, zag. As we move further and further away from, we'll talk about this more, but as we're moving further and further away from conventional run games, mm -hmm. you might need to. You might. It just, just to say, hey, you guys stay fresh and we're going to use you 15 times a game. We're going to use you 15 times a game. Get ready. Uh, Y'all are going to get some touches just on, because jet sweeps and and passes to the flats have replaced sure. like traditional sweeps and options out that way so maybe that's how they're going to be used i don't know we'll talk about it more uh song nice for what oh drake i don't drake. like drake but you like that song i love it's a banger of a song. song thank you that makes me that song that is makes incredible. me excited this morning my favorite drake song I, I wouldn't say it's not my favorite Drake song. I think it's worth worth the argument. All right, everybody. What's up? Happy Tuesday, March 12th. It's going to be a good day. Jessica Benson with you from the Grind City Media Studios in Memphis, Tennessee. CJ Hurt behind the glass. Coming up on today's show, it's a Grizzlies game day. Woo! Yeah. I'll try to convince everyone to be excited for Grizzlies Wizards tonight right here at FedEx Forum. NFL free agency frenzy. It was a busy day one. Kirk Cousins is going to Atlanta. Saquon Barkley is going to the Eagles. Tony Pollard, Memphis native, back in his home state of Tennessee, is to the Titans. We'll break down all the big moves from the NFL yesterday. Will Coleman is going to join us about 50 minutes in. Penny Hardaway talked at his weekly radio show yesterday about his social media posts and had some interesting words in regards to those words. Also, the Memphis Tigers will begin AAC tournament play on Thursday. We'll get Will's take on if they can win four games in four days, make their way to the NCAA tournament, and then we'll do a little TV Tuesday. What we're watching, the Oscars ratings are in, all that and more. Let's have some fun. Let's go. Justin Timberlake. The Forget Tomorrow World Tour. Live in Memphis. Justin Timberlake. FedEx Forum, Saturday, November 23rd. Get tickets this Thursday at 10 a.m. at LiveNation.com. The brand new single Selfish is available to stream and download now. For more, hit up JustinTimberlake.com. Electric, rowdy, intense. They bring the same mentality that they bring anywhere into the building. If they were mad about something, they're bringing it in. If they were happy about something, they're bringing it in. So we need all that energy times a thousand. Real country music with Cody Johnson live Saturday, April 13th at FedEx Forum. Country's best, the Leather Tour, with Cody Johnson, with special guest Justin Moore, also featuring Drake Milligan. VIP and reserve seats on sale at Ticketmaster.com in the FedEx Forum box office. Cody Johnson. Finally, the most electrifying man in entertainment. If you smell what the bloodline is cooking. 
What does The Rock have in store for Friday Night SmackDown? You can never guess what's coming next. Live this Friday. Tickets on sale now. Don't worry, be fluffy world tour. The minute you get into a brand new relationship, like magic, you know who really notices just how happy you are, guys? Other women, not your woman. Look how happy he is. Oh, I bet I can change that. Friday, May 10th, FedEx Forum. Get your tickets now at fluffyguy.com. Don't miss a Memphis. Don't worry, be fluffy world tour. We're going dancing. Welcome to Fandom 101. We need you going crazy in the stands. Oh! Your path to fan mastery begins here. It's all part of the curriculum. The NCAA Division I men's basketball first and second rounds this March in Memphis, Tennessee. Attendance is encouraged. Passion is mandatory. Buy your seats today at NCAA.com slash MBB tickets. Class dismissed. Presents the Jessica Benson Show with CJ Hurt live from the Grind City Media Studios on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Hello, hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday to you. Or should I say, CJ, pip, pip, cheerio, because the Brits found our show after our Kate Middleton conversation yesterday. They said, This is what's wrong with Americans. We are what's wrong with Americans. We focus on, yes, they did. Yeah. Go find the video on YouTube. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. I'm a liar. I, wait, have, have time. you guys send me all types of dumbass things in the group text with you and Jacob and then with you and Darnell and with you and everybody else. Nobody thought to send me that? Where the hell is this? I which just video? I on top of it this morning. Wait, which video? For, Grind City Media worried for Princess Kate Middleton. It's popping off because everybody wants to, where is Kate? I had so many people call me yesterday. Where is Kate? I didn't mean to become this expert. And I texted you yesterday and I said, I'm not even about the royal family's business in this way. But you want to know what I am? I'm about a good mystery. I love a mystery. I grew up reading Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys and all those mystery comments? novels. I know it's going crazy. And until this mystery is solved, I will not rest. So that is where we are at. Are I need things to distract these? myself. Go for it. She got tired of carrying the task of working behind the scenes to make him the star without recognition by rest of the rest of the royals of her work. Get out of here, seat geek. I'm reading something. When her work began to be noticed, William began to abuse her behind closed doors for letting it be known. Enough is enough. So he, she has taken revenge that or he has taken revenge that backfired and became worse than intended. William is incapable of taking care of anything without Kate's direction. He got tired of following her directions, not realizing that she was saving his butt as the prince. Maybe IQ tests are in order for the whole bunch. Typical domestic abuse scenario that got out of hand. Both of them aren't likely to survive. And that is the first mother bleeping comment both of what? them aren't likely to survive and they think we're dramatic Whoa. we're dramatic Whoa. i know but we did have a lot of leave them alone the media's harassing over the picture we are the media it was an honor it was an honor to learn that we are a part of the american media system yesterday there is no other royal person on the world who always exposes and promoted herself do much in showing the world that she has the most wonderful marriage in the world so where is Kate? Where is Kate? <laughs> Join the conversation. I feel like it's like Gone Girl. Maybe she's just going to pop up and it was all her all along. Ooh, heel turn. What if she shows up at WWE SmackDown? <laughs> Memphis, Kate Middleton pops up with The Rock and they do a musical. Kate Middleton and the one that they don't like, the black one. 
The oh, Meghan Markle? Yeah. Tag Markle. team? Tag team. <gasps> are they, I hate, I hate this phrase, but as I enter into my WWE world, are they the new tribal chiefs? Are they taking over? Well. That feels on well, brand. That feels, on it feels brand. a little oh, on Royals. the nose for the royal family, if we're being completely honest. Anyway, I was reading those comments on my way in, and it tickled me that we have such... Ascending Grow voices up. on These this conversation. These lies are awful. This woman has a gift of the gab. I guess you're the woman with the gift of gab. That's so nice. What a compliment. But she needs you to grow up. My favorite he needs was the typical up. American. It's all about us. No, it's not. I'm asking, where is Kate? I'm not asking for myself. I'm asking for her. Anywho, these are the things that I've distracted myself Leave with. I can't. I have nothing better to do with my time. I have to find ways to keep my brain moving so that I don't sit and dwell on the 17 games remaining for the Memphis Grizzlies, one of which is tonight, CJ. One of which is tonight. And I've recently begun this new exercise, which is really being tested at the moment. Instead of using the language, I have to, I've been saying, I get to. I saw this on TikTok, the app that our country is trying to ban. And I swear to God, if they take my TikTok from me, there will be hell to pay from me and the other children. And I am keeping myself at age 32 with the other children on the app of the Tickety Talkety. No, I saw this video and I thought it was actually legit good advice, which happens often on TikTok before you hate it dive in there yourself, but it's this notion of shifting perspective from I have to to I get to, and it's approaching life with this sense of gratitude instead of an attitude. <laughs> I came up with that rhyme in real time. Um, but for example, every morning I, I get to wake up. So like when my alarm goes off at 4.30, I'm grateful. I'm like, oh, this is great. I get to wake up for another day. I get to get ready for a job that like 12 year old me would have killed to have would be so proud to know that I have I get to eat breakfast because I get to buy myself groceries because I'm fortunate enough to have money to buy groceries I get to go to work and like walk my way into the building with my legs because I'm lucky enough to have two functioning legs right you're getting getting the picture I'm struggling to put together the words I get to watch the Memphis Grizzlies and the Washington Wizards play a real-life NBA basketball game at FedEx Forum tonight. Chris tried to convince me on the way out, saying that it might be one of the funnier basketball games that I watch all year. Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzma with the Wizards on the Grizzlies injury report side. We have had some doozies of injury reports this year. Obviously, it has been the common theme, the common thread that weaves the 2023-2024 season together. But this one, no oh boy, Jaron Jackson Jr. out, Vince Williams Jr. out. Juan well, Hobby's been out. Paid, he's been out. I'm more concerned of Vince Williams Jr. has really grown as a facilitator. We love to see it, but he is out. So heavy on the Luke Kennard. I do love to see Scottie Pippen Jr. upgraded to doubtful. Could be some good news for the last few weeks of the season. We haven't seen him since February 12th. Is he able to go out there and prove that he could be worthy of some time next season, perhaps on a two-way backup point guard opportunities, whatever it may be. And then questionable tonight, Jordan Goodwin, John Conchar, and Lamar Stevens. Questionable usually trends towards good. We've reached the point in the season where I would guess if I had to guess, two of those three would play. Possibly all three of them play. But you're facing the worst team in the NBA. The worst in all the NBA. And tomorrow you get to face one of the other worst teams in the NBA in the Charlotte Hornets. So it makes sense sitting, especially Jaron Jackson Jr., on the first night of a back-to-back. -back. There is absolutely no reason for Jaron Jackson Jr. <laughs> Jaron Jackson Jr. to play back-to-backs at this point. Um, it is a home game, and this is a place where the Grizzlies have only won seven games all season, so it just feels extra bleh to have to go into a deep injury report against a bad team. And it's really not about them losing, although it will hurt. Like, getting a loss to the Wizards would be a low in a season of many lows. Like, that's the crater. But the worst than a loss piece would be if they get blown out by the Washington Wizards. Can we agree on that? They've already cratered. No. You can't crater uh -uh -uh. anymore. Those what two are you losses to the about? Trailblazers were a thin layer close to You've, the middle of the earth. You cratered. But this is taking the shovel and scooping deep down into the hard part of the ground that we rest upon. At 
user dash JH2DN2ZU4P, you should not have told me about this, says if it is true that Prince William equals in love with Rose Hanbury, we'll talk about her more in a minute, then we must prepare ourselves to give sweet Rose a warm welcome. Maybe the life of Prince William then will come into calmer waters instead of the continuing competition with the almighty cunning Kate, all caps on almighty and cunning. First off, this feels like a bot. Have the royals made bots to target these things? One, and by these things, I mean people speculating on where Kate is. One. Kay. Two, who the bleep is Rose? Rose is the woman that Prince William is allegedly having an affair with. Oh. That potentially led to this whole t tumbleweed of a situation within their own marriage. Also, I need to. How do I know that? Because Weeks been... ago. You've been, you've been in it. I need you to continue. Oh, I'm you in got, it. You've got I to told you, I'm Nancy Drew. Me. I refuse. There will be. Give me my, what's it called? Magnifying glass. <laughs> give me my, my Sherlock, uh, Carmen Sandiego. She solved mysteries, didn't she? I just I played the, the computer mystery, game no, I think often. the mystery is where is Carmen? I don't think mm. Carmen was the one solving them. I could have that mistaken, though. What, was she, what did Carmen Sandiego do? She was a spy. Okay, and spy, she just she just kicked it. Investigator. There, there's a Carmen San Diego Netflix cartoon. That's pretty good. Oh, That's pretty good. It's it's, a, it's old. It's loved the computer games. That okay. was my jam. They were so nerdy. They mm -hmm. were like language arts yep. and history and math. And those were the problems that you had to solve in order to win the Carmen San Diego computer games. Anyway, where is Kate? Will the Grizzlies at least They've have already a pulse? cratered. They, they've already cratered. No. It's, it's already been low. You don't understand. You don't have to be there in the flesh every year. This could be bad. It is the Tyus Jones return game. We should get a Tyus oh, Jones tribute I, I video. Might, well, come I, on by. I, I might be in there. I okay. might come through to see the Tyus. To see the Tyus Jones I'm, tribute I'm video. I'm going to the Orpheum uh, tonight. Are you seeing Mrs. Doubtfire? Am I seeing Mrs. <gasps> Doubtfire? We're supposed to see it Thursday. I've been trying to sell my tickets. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I just don't want to go. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it's great. I support all arts at the Orpheum. We just have a very busy week, you know, with the whole Rock, WWE, SmackDown on oh, Friday night. The back-to-back -back Mrs. Doubtfire, Mrs. Doubtfire SmackDown, Smackdown feels, and we're dog-sitting. <laughs> and I have Grizzlies, Wizards, Grizzlies, Hornets on back-to-back -back nights as well, so there's not a lot of space. Hey, what, a week, what a week that could be. Yes. Grizzlies, Wizards, Grizzlies, Hornets, Mrs. Doubtfire, WWE, SmackDown. Uh, now, now you're saying mm, that out loud. A, You've got to do that's it. That's a four for four. You've that's a four by four it. winner of a week, if you ask How me. How often do you get to do that? <laughs> Not often. World-class athletes on the basketball court twice. Then you've got world class actors and actresses on the stage. Mm -hmm. And then you've got world class athletes in the wrestling ring. What is a Harkle? Oh, it's like some derogatory term for Meghan Markle. Oh, okay. I would assume. <laughs> I've never heard it, but it rhymes with Markle. Uh, <laughs> Courtney Williams in the chat says, no Tyus Jones tribute video. What are we what? doing this for? What? Why are we having... <laughs> Just kidding. What I know it's a scheduled game. No Please, everybody, come out to FedEx Forum and support your Memphis Grizzlies. The fan support has been awesome. Like, this will be the biggest <laughs> test of the season. But if fans could come out for back-to-back -back games against the Portland Trailblazers, by God, you can come out for Grizzlies Wizards tonight, even if there is not going to be a Tyus Jones tribute video for, again, the leader in assist-to-turnover ratio in the NBA. A, a tribute video for a fellow... Fellow man stuck There's in purgatory no this season. The really? Grizzlies are in purgatory. Tyus Jones is in purgatory. He can be free after this year. I am hoping good things for Tyus. I want Tyus Jones to end up being a starting point guard on a contender. And that is why I would like Tyus Jones to go to the Orlando Magic this offseason. I would like Tyus Jones to get good things. And it, I think he's got millions of them. Oh, that's so sweet. He, he, he made his decision. Yeah, like but it's one of those things where, you know, when they say, Kuzma, like, CJ, what? when they say money doesn't buy happiness, they are directly referring to <laughs> NBA players playing for the Washington Wizards. Like, money doesn't buy happiness. Do you play a professional sport in the nation's capital? Okay, well, <laughs> exhibit A in the dictionary of cliches. I've gotten a bunch of rubbishes, so I know they're, they're British. Oh, yeah, I know. They're, they're, it they're feels British. very British-coded. This one. Keep on capitalizing on this topic, folks. The Harkles now have to come That's up with us. something more dramatic, and so the saga goes on. All should lay off and move on ASAP, in my opinion. Comment. Leave Meghan and Harry out of your mouth. 
<laughs> Whoa. Other comment? Yes, they leave such a bad taste. Oh, wow. They don't like... Oh, they hate them. This is... That's why they moved to California. Like, we've, we've got to do nothing but talk about this now. They left the royal family. I don't, I don't know the innards deep enough it, you to filibuster You don't have this. to know the innards. We just have to say, say things. They get in the Where comments. They get it popping. Kate? Whoa. I know. Sorry, who is this woman? Did you She's know? a liar, I'm afraid. Referring to That's you. That's me. That's me, a liar. I had three phone calls yesterday about this. I had multiple text what? messages about this. This is all my my womankind care about. But I do think it's a testament because all of the men know now, too. I'm not trying to gender it. Like, there are definitely Well, it's on CNN. Men like, this, who... this morning when I woke okay. up and watched... Well, I'm, I'm up at for, like, the 3.30-ish right. CNN. So it's the international The early one. CNN. Um, but, yo, it's, it's there now also. I think ABC News ran something... Mm -hmm. on it so like it's all well the second the, the photoshop thing happens it becomes actual news because the associated press refused to run that photo and advised other publications not to run the photo because it was so clearly doctored so that's when it becomes it's just such a pr mishap like what are you thinking why on earth would you put out such a badly manipulated badly photoshopped picture do you think people are stupid this is the year 2024 all we do is hang out online nobody goes outside anymore we just sit at our phones and again on tiktok and people will make videos about the videos of the videos of the picture and then next thing you know all you've seen is this picture for days and days and days but all of the husbands all the partners <laughs> are deeply invested in this as well. Chris texted me his theory yesterday, so we have officially gone into it. And as I sit watching Grizzlies Wizards, if things devolve tonight, I'll probably get back on page six, I'll get back on the Daily Mail, I'll continue to figure out, because I certainly won't be looking for a Tyus Jones tribute video, because I regret to inform everyone. <laughs> We are not getting one. We are not getting one. Just a reminder to everyone, because this is what we do on Grizzlies Game Days. Losing is fine. Repeat after me. Losing is fine. Why? Because of the tankathon standings. We know that the Grizzlies probably cannot move up better than sixth. They are they are staunchly in sixth. It is really hard to get in that one through five of the tankathon rankings. But at sixth right now, the Grizzlies are only one single solitary game ahead of the Toronto, I don't know why I said it like that, Toronto Raptors who are in seventh. And it would be very advantageous for the Raptors to lose and dump into that sixth spot because... The Raptors have to give their pick to the Spurs if they're outside the bottom six. If they are in the bottom six, then Toronto will get that pick for themselves. The Raptors, they're trying hard. They've lost four in a row. The Grizzlies have only lost two in a row. So we will see what happens. Just don't get blown out to the Wizards. All right, let's do our daily simulation lottery. The Grizzlies would get the number three pick. Do, 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 do. With the third pick in the 2024 NBA draft. The Memphis Grizzlies select Kate Middleton. <laughs> um, so listen, <laughs> I want to shout yes. out. I want to shout out Darnell in the social media department. I don't know who did the graphic for or the thumbnail for the Kate Yesterday's Middleton, show. the Kate Middleton uh, part that they grabbed. Mm. But it is it is wonderful. It is just a bunch of copies of the the, the cover of the Photoshop picture with the JBS logo bottom left, top right. Is Kate okay or where is Kate? Great, great stuff from those guys. It's Every superb. day we need to have a where is Kate tracker. Oh, I like it. Do we think the royal family has ever been to Memphis? <laughs> I would like to open our doors. This no. is a safe space. No, we don't want them coming here. No. I want the exclusive interview with Kate Middleton. Oh, you want the interview? We want the interview. out of whatever we want the interview. she has been in on Easter when she rises. Like Jesus? We've got uh, some interesting theories coming from Nick Armstrong in the chat. Okay. One, she got a hy hysterectomy and is still recovering from that. That's what I've said. Or two. I'm with you, Nick. These, these are his words. William's ugly mistress is having a baby. Hmm. Of those two theories. <laughs> Again, Listen, I said this part right here. Of the two theories, she had a hysterectomy and is still recovering, or William's mistress is having a baby. Jessica, which one do you believe the most? Which one is the right theory? I have long said the most rational answer to all of this is mm. that she had something like a hysterectomy mm. or whatever the surgery was, was some kind of vanity altering 
surgery. It could be as simple as having to take medication to gain weight. She's a very thin, very fit person. Perhaps she doesn't want to be photographed looking not like herself. That is the most realistic option. But the more fun option is option number two. The mistress is having a baby. Don't call me a liar. I'm just sharing other people's theories in the chat. Listen, we will take a quick break here. It is Grizzlies Wizards game day. It is also the Hoops for St. Jude game. And on a serious note, if you are looking for something to celebrate tonight at Grizzlies Wizards, Hoops for St. Jude is always it. It's tonight's game against the Wizards. Tomorrow night against the Hornets is also Hoops for St. Jude. And tomorrow night will be the special celebrity basketball game at halftime. We're going to have Anthony Miller former Memphis Tiger on tomorrow's show. He is on one of these celebrity teams that will play in that game at half. But tonight there will be an airplane toss at halftime of the game. And I love a good airplane toss. The first 10,000 fans who show up tonight will receive a paper airplane template upon entry. And then they'll have the opportunity to throw those airplanes zoom, 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 zoom onto the court. And you could have a chance to win a 2024 Kia Sorento courtesy of Gossett Motor Garage. Obviously, St. Jude is one of the best things about Memphis and the Grizzlies partnership with St. Jude is always awesome. What they do for children having to go through the unbearable, the families of those children is just one of the most beautiful things that we can celebrate each and every day. So hoops for St. Jude day. Prizes begin today as well. If you go to grizzlies.com slash St. Jude, you have the opportunity to win a 20th anniversary Grizzlies bobblehead set featuring 20 total bobbleheads. That's going on right now from 8 to 10 if you're with us live. From 9 to 10, you could win a downtown Memphis staycation featuring a two-night hotel stay and various Memphis attraction passes. Go there now, grizzlies.com slash St. Jude. Come tonight, be part of the paper airplane toss. Don't see a Tyus Jones tribute video, but maybe the Grizzlies will get a home win. We'll come back, talk NFL free agency on the other side. Take your fandom to the next level with the official Grizzlies app. Go all access and behind the scenes. It's got to be heavy defense. That's where it starts for us. Personalized to where you are and who you are. Get easy access to ticketing, the game day guide, and your own app customization right at your fingertips. Upgrade your experience and download the Grizzlies app today. LifeCare Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At LifeCare, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. Anticipate each challenge. Make a quick response. Capitalize on every opportunity and win. Greatness won't wait. It's true in basketball. It's true in banking. Grizzlies checking from Pinnacle. Play hard. Bank easy. Open a Grizzlies checking account with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by April 30th. And you could receive a $200 direct deposit bonus into your account. Details at grizzliesbanking.com. Member FDIC. When it's all on the line, you turn to the strong, the stable, the unwavering. To those with a history of raising their performance to meet the moment. It's true in basketball. It's true in banking. Grizzlies checking from Pinnacle. Play hard. Bank easy. Open a Grizzlies checking account with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by April 30th. And you could receive a $200 direct deposit bonus into your account. Details at grizzliesbanking.com. Member FDIC. Vince Williams is going to go to All-Star Weekend. Now, what a great thing for him. Kudos to, to Vince Williams Jr. You know, um, he was an injury replacement on the Panini Rising Stars. He'll get a chance to be part of the All-Star Weekend Showcase. Hey, Grizzlies fans, be sure to tune in to Grizzby, where the panel and I break down all things Grizzlies and take a look at the rest of the NBA as well. The show is live every Wednesday, 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Kayla sent in this picture, so we're going to show you guys. I just want to get your okay. initial thoughts. Oh, wow. If one of you walked in with this, who would you be least surprised wearing these boots? The least surprised word? Bennett. Bennett. No. 
Man, it definitely surprised for it. No. He's probably seen somebody at a rock concert wearing something like this. Least surprised? Okay, I gotta go with the gang, Bennett. <laughs> the Sneak Fest Show, live Tuesdays at 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Now for a limited time, the new $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps are here at Sonic. Who could deny a crispy chicken tender with bold flavors like hickory barbecue and cheesy Baja? And we can't forget the crisp lettuce and melty cheese to make the perfect bite. Wrap yourself up with some TLC, tender, love, and chicken for only $1.99. Sonic $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps. Tax not included, limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Welcome back, welcome back. If you are excited for Grizzlies Wizards tonight at FedEx Forum, please go ahead and like today's show on YouTube. Or if you're not excited for Grizzlies Wizards tonight at FedEx Forum, go ahead and like today's show on YouTube. And that is how you garner engagement. Real talk, though, we mentioned it on the way out. It is the Grizzlies Hoops for St. Jude games tonight and tomorrow. And we are super excited to have Anthony Miller on the show tomorrow. Former Memphis Tiger, uh, played in the NFL for a couple of years, tough with injuries. He was drafted by the Chicago Bears. It'll be an awesome opportunity to connect with him. He is playing in the Celebrity All Star game tomorrow, which will be coached by Tony Allen and Zach Randolph. When's the last time Anthony Miller did an interview? I don't know. Fun fact, Anthony Miller was my first ever sit-down interview here in Memphis, my first year back in 2016-2017 of the season. And at that point, he had emerged as this fantastic wide receiver for the Memphis Tigers and being a part of those Mike Norvell teams. And he had been a walk-on at Christian Brothers High School, I believe, was the beginning of his journey. Then he was a walk-on at Memphis, earned a scholarship, and so on and so forth. So it'll be exciting to have the opportunity to see what he's up to. I think he was on a practice squad this past season, maybe with the Steelers it was. Can't remember exactly what team he ended up with, but find out where he's at in his NFL journey. And then also for people to continue to have the opportunity to give back to St. Jude. Finding cures, saving kids, that is all St. Jude is about, and it's great that the Grizzlies are able to partner with them each and every year. Those teams for the Celebrity All-Star Game tomorrow uh, on Team Zach, it's Ashley Shields, who we had on the show last year, friend of the show. She's on Anthony Miller's team, so we're developing a super team in relation to the Jessica Benson show with CJ Hurt. Uh, Famous Amos, Kia Shine, who has been on our show as well, so that's a threefer, and then Justin Moore, and then Team Tony is NLE Choppa, Carmion Hamilton, Drummer Boy, Zach Duncan, and Zach Myers. So we will preview that more tomorrow. Before we dive into NFL free agency, I forgot in the first segment when I mentioned uh, Tyus Jones, who again is in the running to lead the NBA in assist to turnover ratio, as Tyus Jones often does. It made me start thinking about turnovers, which made me start thinking about one of the craziest box scores that I have ever seen. It is tournament time as we continue onward through this last weekend of college basketball before we get to Selection Sunday on Sunday. And yesterday, this box score popped up on my timeline, and someone said, this is the craziest box score that I have ever seen. And it was from the Sunbelt Women's Championship game, Marshall and James Madison. And if we can pop this up, the final score, 95-92, final in overtime. That's a pretty high-scoring women's basketball game, but, you know, you move on. You go to the first line. Marshall took 99 shots. 99 shots and only won the game by three points. So go down a little bit. Okay, they shot 30% from the field, 30 of 99. That's bad math. Meanwhile, JMU, 50%. A nice shooting night for James Madison. You go of the three-point shots. James Madison, a casual five of 11. Marshall, eight of 46. Marshall almost took more threes than James Madison took in the entire game of shots. James Madison took 53 shots. Marshall took 46 threes. That's a casual 17% from the three-point line. After the, okay. th- after okay. the 30th three, you, Maybe you, you stop. you've got to say, hey, yo, you we go got to, to do something now. Go to the rack. Give me a post move. Give me anything. So you keep going down, and you're like, how on earth did Marshall only win this game by three points or how did they win it period okay go 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 oh total turnovers at the bottom james madison had 39 turnovers in this game 39 turnovers how does that happen 
I was stunned. I was astonished. I had to share this because this is why we march. <laughs> this is why we march, baby. They had nine 39 assists. Turnovers. Thirty-nine they turnovers. They had nine. Yeah. So what's that? What's that ratio? Turnover to assist ratio. Horrible. Divide by three. <laughs> Bad. Three. Three and thir- three thirteen. What what math am I doing? You're doing the ratio. Nine nine thirty ninths is three thirteenths. There you go. The, they had a turnover ratio of three to thirteen. So yeah. for every yeah. three assists they got, they had thirteen, 13 turnovers. turnovers. If we could I narrow need it to down, see to highlights for from every this game. one assist, basically it's from every one assist they got, they had four turnovers and change. I need to watch this game. I was quite literally convinced that I was being punked. So I went to the ESPN website myself because I was like, Sur- surely somebody doctored this box score and this is not real. No, no, no. Those are the real team stats like on they- ESPN.com. Like they doctored. Kate Middleton's family photo on mm-hmm. UK Mother's Day. That's right, everybody. We're going to keep bringing it back around. Uh, nothing has been doctored in the NFL free agency world. Uh, NFL free agency began yesterday. It is off and running. Our chat question of the day, if you are joining us live, what has been the best free agency move so far? Uh, something that happened earlier was the Chiefs retaining Chris Jones. You had Kirk Cousins going to Atlanta, which came out yesterday. Tony Pollard to the Titans yesterday has 31% of the vote. I think there might be a little homerism going on in that vote and uh, Russell Wilson to the Steelers which we haven't had the opportunity to talk about because Monday's show was so big I would add within that Saquon Barkley going to the Eagles and I will start there because it really was the attitude of yesterday like running backs are so back right like running backs the value they still matter running backs still matter and Saquon Barkley was one of nine notable running backs who made big moves yesterday and Saquon's is the biggest leaving the Giants for the Eagles this is what he posted on his own Instagram saying I'm trying to be what I'm destined to be and right now he is destined for a three-year contract worth 37.75 million dollars that is photoshopped he did not actually have an Eagles jersey on the sideline of a game yet but he will 26 million of that is guaranteed uh, could get all the way up to 46 million dollars it's interesting for Saquon Barkley somebody who had been trying to get that kind of deal done with the Giants for years the Eagles managed to get it done in this free agent period obviously for Saquon much has been noted that this will be the best offensive line that he has had the opportunity to play behind. It will be the best quarterback that he has had the chance to play under in Jalen Hurts and what that Eagles offense can be. Can Saquon Barkley stay healthy? It really becomes a personal thing. I think he's only had two fully healthy seasons in his six seasons in the NFL. So the Eagles are banking that the answer to that question is yes, and particularly if he can be protected by a better offensive line, that yes, they lose Jason Kelsey, but it's still a really good unit in the NFL. And Saquon Barkley gets another opportunity. Do you think that that is one of the biggest moves from yesterday? Or what was your response when you saw that? I, I like it. I with the With the NFL, though, I, I'm not good at this sort of thing. Right, I'm not good at predicting NFL. No, I just stuff. get really enamored. Wait till we get to Kirk Cousins. Yeah, uh, and and so like I I need to see it on the field in action to to see if it works. But like you said, it's the best offensive line he's played with, best quarterback he's played with, best overall team he's played with since being a pro. If his body can hold up, and that's always the question with running backs: Can their body hold up? Can their body hold up? What if their body holds up? It, will it? If his body holds up, like I, I think it's a really, really yeah. good move because he is a dynamic runner. And we were talking before the show about some of those gadgety running backs. He's a dynamic power runner, and he's got that gadget ability. Christian McCaffrey immediately comes to mind. I was looking to try and see because I feel like. And I, that's this is why I was looking. I feel like I don't know for certain, but I feel like we had health issues or health questions about McCaffrey when he was with the Panthers also. Mm-hmm. And I think that when you're playing on bad teams and teams with bad offensive linemen, that changes the types of hits that you take as a running back. If you're playing with a good offensive line and not just a good offensive line, but a good coach, a good offensive coordinator, that helps you out a ton because how could it not? A good offensive coordinator, a good coach helps everybody out. How could it not help you out as a running back? And so I think that getting to the Eagles, I have a bit less concern from an injury standpoint of Saquon than I would if he stayed with the Giants where they're just going to run him straight into dudes and nobody's going to be able to block. He's going to take big hit after big hit. Yeah. Uh, Christian McCaffrey definitely 
had more injuries, more consistent injuries when he played for the Panthers. He had an ankle sprain right out the gate week two in his rookie season. He had the shoulder injury. Uh, he had a glute injury. He had a hamstring injury. He had another ankle sprain that kept him out for the rest of the 2021 season. So, I mean, that, his, that's his, a perfect his, example, his, though, really. His Christian McCaffrey, the last three years in Carolina games played, he played three, seven, and eight. Right? Like, that's... I think that is a testament to bad offensive line work mm. and bad coaching. And I think Saquon being with significantly better coaches, with a significantly better offensive line, with a significantly better quarterback, I think that helps him out a ton. I really yeah. like that move. And I'm not entirely in the, like, oh, yesterday was complete proof that the NFL values running backs again, right? Because there were some moves along with those nine notable signings. The Bengals ended up cutting Joe Mixon in the dark of the night. Joe Mixon has has some baggage. Joe Mixon shot a kid in the dark of the night. I don't let Chris live down that he has drafted Joe Mixon in multiple fantasy football drafts. The the other situation shouldn't have happened. Correct. I mean... I don't want to be like, I get it, but it shouldn't have happened. No, it should not. When it comes to uh, what that means for the Bengals, though, it's interesting. Like You're seeing teams, of course, not wanting to spend money on two running backs. The other big, big signing was Josh Jacobs, who's getting $48 million from the Packers, and they cut Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones, who has restructured his contract multiple times uh, to try to make things work with Green Bay. Aaron Jones has already now landed with the... Jones landed with the Vikings this morning, um, so that's the most recent move there. So he's going from one NFC North team to another. Um, But one of the other running back moves yesterday, and non-move, Derrick Henry has not found a new home, but the Titans signing of Tony Pollard, and none of this becomes official until Wednesday, but it's all expected to play out. We can't be fine. Nobody's going to get mad at us. Yeah, reportedly, allegedly, we don't have to play the song. song. This isn't the NBA. We're not the royal family official media, and we're not the NFL official media. Uh, but the news that Tony Pollard is going to the Titans, and when this first comes by, I'm like, oh, sweet. Like, Tony Pollard's coming back to Tennessee, which is great, which is why I think a fair number of you in the chat are excited about this signing. He played at the University of Memphis, obviously has spent uh, the entirety of his NFL career thus far in Dallas, and especially this past season where he was put in an opportunity to be the lead back as they moved on from Ezekiel Elliott. Tony Pollard struggled in that role but now the titans are going with him and he will join a backfield with ty j spears and if you look at tony pollard and ty j spears it is very spider-man mimi they are very similar players tony pollard is just a couple years older than ty j spears and so i think it's interesting new head coach in brian callahan going away from traditional ground and pound from smash mouth football and you have two similar styled pass, catch, focused running backs sharing a backfield. It's just the size for me. Like, maybe this is the future of the NFL. I don't know if the future is now. But when you look at Derrick Henry, who was 6'3", 247 pounds, Tony Pollard, 6'2", 209. Tyje Spears is 5'10", generously 200, maybe closer to 190. I, we talked about it pre-show. After talking about the Saquon thing, if you don't have a good offensive line, what do you need a big back for? Right? Like, that's not going to work. You would need to have – how do you help a, a yeah. bad offensive line out? You help them out by slowing down the pass rush. If they can't block it, you got to hit them with some screens. you got to hit them with some quick passes out in the flat. You've got to hit them with somebody in the slot who can get open really, really quick. Right? You start with the back in the backfield. You send them out to the slot, and then boom, you throw him a nice little bubble screen or you throw him a nice little comeback or or a slant or something like that, a simple, quick out pattern to to help the bad offensive line. I I think the more I sit in it, the more I can convince myself that this is a really good move for the Titans. But again, I'm bad at these sorts of things. I'd need to see it play out on the field. And then once it's already happened, I can tell you definitively – whether or not it was a good thing or a bad thing. But I have to see it happen first. With my own eyeballs. I'll tell you what came through NFL free agency yesterday that I'm convinced I don't need to see with my own eyeballs. I am already all in 
on next year's NFC South champions, the Atlanta Falcons, after signing Kirk Cousins to a four-year, $180 million deal, 100 mil guaranteed. Welcome to the cost of business with quarterbacks in free agency. The best available for a 36-year-old coming off an Achilles injury quarterback. You know my feelings on Kirk Cousins. That said, they are skewed a little bit. It, anything post-Achilles, and this is a me problem. I recognize that, but I know other people are out there as well. I got to see it to believe it. I have to see the comeback with my eyes. That said, if I close my eyes and envision just the Kirk Cousins who has been Kirk Cousins in Minnesota, who has led the Vikings to... 20 wins in the last two seasons. No postseason wins. That's why I didn't say that they're going to win a playoff game. I just said NFC South regular season champions, the Atlanta Falcons, because this is so similar to what he had in Minnesota in having great offensive weapons. And as somebody who had a lot of stock in Kyle Pitts and B. John Robinson and Drake London in the fantasy football scope, welcome to the promised land, everybody. This is what we've been waiting for. Those numbers will go up. Maybe Drake London proves that, and I am not I am not saying that Drake London is the next Justin Jefferson, but you just need a quarterback who doesn't stink it up. You don't need Desmond Ritter in there throwing four picks a game. You have somebody who has proven to be a steady offensive leader in a successful regular season team if the right weapons are around him, and Atlanta has just that. So I am intrigued by Kirk Cousins to it. Not just intrigued, inspired. Are you inspired enough to make the same mistake that you made last yes. year and put so he much stock in in the uh Falcons skill position players? Oh, yes. They have a okay. new coach and a new quarterback. I think that can make the world of a difference. I don't know about you. You sit in that chair, Will. Sounds life changing um, if you ask me. Yeah, just pick a chair and sit in it off camera. You're fine. We'll get to you in a second. Um yeah, no, I don't know why you would be willing to to be that way. I will say one thing working for Kirk Cousins is the fact that he doesn't beat good teams and there's not a whole lot of good teams in that division. The Panthers aren't good. The Saints aren't good. Your biggest competition is the, the Bucks. The Bucks maybe. Who did resign Baker. And so you're playing the – where did they finish last year in the division? Second? Tied for, yeah, in second. Did they finish second they or third? They both finished 9-8. Um, and eight. Okay. The so, Saints and the Bucks finish nine and eight. So you're playing a second place schedule, so that might be tough. I'm assuming there will be some good teams there that he'll probably not probably he'll definitely lose to because he doesn't beat good teams. But as long as you're not having Just to play keep good him out teams, of prime time. yeah, don't keep keep, the keep him out of prime time. time and don't let him play good teams. That's what you have to do for Kirk Cousins. The the one of the Migos is is excited Quavo. about this. Quavo said something about chains i don't know he posted on instagram had a comment on this picture and said we have plenty of chains down here ice them out kirk frost Ooh, burr from matty ice to kirk frost what is it with atlanta i don't know why do they like these ice things so <laughs> much know. ice tray matty ice yeah kirk yeah. frost like it's hot lana damn it it's a warm city looking, it's not cold they're looking for coolness wherever they can you got to cool off with the heat. I'm with you on, obviously, it's a much easier division for Kirk Cousins. NFC North has proven that the Packers have something in Jordan Love. The Lions are on the up and up. The Bears, who knows what they officially do with the pick in this year's draft. Are they moving into? They grab Swift. Speaking of running back. They did. Um, but don't worry, because the Vikings are in good hands. Sam Darnold was signed by the There's Vikings. no way he's a starting Sam quarterback. Dar no. There's no way no, he's a starting he did, quarterback. Reportedly, he had options. Like, he picked Minnesota. It wasn't a sheer, oh, my God, let's just slough it off to this guy. Like, Sam Darnold had three teams that he was picking from. He picked the Vikings. That said, I'm with you. They will take a quarterback in the draft, and it will be the Sam Darnold show for three weeks, and then it will be the ushering in of... If it's J.J. McCarthy? Oh, I hope not. I oh, hope first not. off, if you're drafting J.J. in the first round, there's something wrong well, with Whoever you. it is, you get Justin oh. Jefferson. Like, you have one of the best weapons in the NFL. Yeah, it's still, you have to be a, a good NFL quarterback. Right. I, I love J.J. I do. But they can hide a lot of inefficiencies. There will be a lot to hide. <laughs> like, I, the fact that we're talking about J.J. McCarthy going to the first round is like that's a problem he shouldn't be a first round quarterback pick and all the pressure that comes with that either way it goes wish jj mccarthy all the best because that's my guy no matter what happens in the nfl 
J.J. McCarthy is still a national champion for the University of Michigan Wolverines. And I love him for it. Don't worry, the most recent NFL mock draft, they won't even have the opportunity because the Patriots are going to take him with the third pick, which I is mean, insane. Why? Outside of Williams, we why would so you take any of these NFL dudes in the drafts, first round? Which is, is, there, is there another quarterback outside of that? I would take, take Jaden Daniels. Okay. I'd be willing to All right. put some stock in that. But I... I and obviously Drake May, but I, I've been a Drake May hater from the jump. So I'm not taking Drake not May in the first my, round. Not going to be my pick. No. All right, we got to take a quick break. Will Coleman is going to join us on the other side. Penny Hardaway had some interesting comments at his weekly radio show yesterday. The Memphis Tigers are headed to the AAC tournament where they will have to win four games in four days. We'll ask Will if they can do it on the other side. Let's face it. There's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. Grizzlies fans know it's the team that gives you the edge. Big River Steel does too. That's why we're recruiting the best talent to help us develop the sustainable steel needed for today and tomorrow. Join us at the edge of the future. Visit www.bigriversteel.com backslash join to join our Dash team. That's www.bigriversteel.com backslash join to join our Dash team. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. Jamarco Green, first team all sweat. Man, first man. team all untucked jersey, too. Bro, he's just. Did you, who, what team had you had to sweat the most? Jamarco Green. KG. KG's up there. Sure. KG. We got, we got and, swe and, swept in the first round. And, by my, the boy, and my boy Swamp Thing. Uh, who? who? Big Perk. Oh, Big Perk. They yeah. sweat more than Jamichael? All right. Man, Bro, my boy <laughs> sweating like a boy. Listen, son of, son of walking body. The Chris Vernon Show, presented by Caesar Sportsbook, live weekdays at noon on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. I think it might be unfair a little bit to just make an album trashing him. Because what is he going to do? Make a crappy movie trashing her? You know like, what I would do? Huh? I would write songs about her. I think we're gonna, He's an actor, right? Yeah, I don't care. I just write bad songs about her. I'd just be like, and you were tall with long legs, but I hated your guts because you were so mean. Nobody really knows how awful you are. I just write bad. If you're going to write bad songs about me, I'm going to write bad okay, songs about you. Okay. The Gary Paris Show, live weekdays at 10 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Now for a limited time, the new $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps are here at Sonic. Who could deny a crispy chicken tender with bold flavors like hickory barbecue and cheesy Baja? And we can't forget the crisp lettuce and melty cheese to make the perfect bite. Wrap yourself up with some TLC, tender, love, and chicken for only $1.99. Sonic $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps. Tax not included, limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. He's looking for the hot hand. Jaren got the step, got the flush. There's no layups on that one. Electric, rowdy, intense. They bring the same mentality that they bring anywhere into the building. If they were mad about something, they're bringing it in. If they were happy about something, they're bringing it in. So we need all that energy times a thousand. Before we get to Will Coleman, I have exciting, enthralling, impactful news. Tonight at FedEx Forum, Grizzlies Wizards, there will be a Tyus Jones Let's tribute go! video. Ooh, I cannot wait to see floater after floater after floater. I can't
cannot wait to see Crispy Pass after Crispy Pass after Crispy Pass, the great former Memphis Grizzlies backup point guard, Tyus Jones, current starting point guard for the Washington Wizards, Tyus Jones, will get a tribute video. So now you have two reasons to come to FedEx Forum tonight. One, to say thank you to one of the great dudes of the Memphis Grizzlies of recent memory. Just all around, Tyus Jones was always a joy to interview, a joy to watch on the court as he often had people saying crazy things. Things like, oh, maybe the Grizzlies are better without John Morant. No, that's stupid. That's just how good Tyus Jones is as a backup point guard and why he had the opportunity to be a starter and will continue to have the opportunity to be a starter in the NBA. And then two, hoops for St. Jude night, and you can throw a paper airplane down at the court at halftime. There you go. Wrap it with a bow. Will Coleman, Will you be at Grizzlies Wizards tonight at FedEx Forum? Is there anything I could do to convince you to come to Grizzlies Wizards? Um, I don't know. Because I, I play, mm. Only because I play basketball on Tuesday nights. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's that's I, tough. Yeah, you have a game. Lucky, you have a lucky, game. lucky for you, first off, I want to know about this run because I want to play. <laughs> One. Two, you got a, a game tomorrow night. So you just come to tomorrow night's game. You'll be fine. <laughs> okay. What do y'all run? Is it first – is this good basketball being played? Or is so it dudes this, like me able to run around out there? So this, the league that I play in, I, I was fresh off of a wrist injury, so I decided to play down. And this this league at the Memphis Event Center, you, you could play in this. This is the B League. You could play in this one, CJ. Yeah, you, you, you could play in this one. Let me know. Let yeah, me know if y'all need, need a fill-in. You could play I'm, in I'm this there. One. The Grizzlies might there. need a fill-in, though. So, Will, if you've ever wanted a 10-day contract. <laughs> They're giving them away. This might be your Listen, best I, I, opportunity. It sucks. So, I, I mean, I know we're talking. It's just hypotheticals here. But I, I really hate that I got injured on my own accord. Yeah. Like, I, I 100% would have went to go try out for the hustle. 100%. You got to do it next year. They, I mean, y'all know how to league. I'm about to be 36. Oh, you're fine. Lie. Just lie. You're not 36. Don't you're you're going to have when they do my uh, medical and all. I was you're 30. Say, They're not going to. Do they need? They don't need your birth lie, certificate. Your body cannot. They don't need your birth certificate. I just, man, I don't know. I, just, I felt like I could have really. I think you would need, like, the social to get paid. Is your birthday on the social? I think so. Is it? I don't no, know. I know it's not on your social security card. It's not on your oh. social. Is it on your, it's on your passport. You need two forms of ID. And that, that might be why. So I they wonder get the where age. my social security card oh, is. Jessica, good Have y'all ever seen, you know, the thing with Russell Wilson? They talk about he, he a cornball. He look corny yeah. because he, he, he look like somebody knows where his birth certificate is. <laughs> So no, like, I've never oh, yeah. seen that. So it's it's kind of crazy. As a person oh, God, whose I have parents, no idea where my birth certificate as is. As a person whose parents never knew where their birth certificate was and always got in trouble for them not knowing where my, as a child, my birth certificate, my social security card was, I know exactly where that is. I know where I it know is, I know exactly too. where my stuff is because it, it is never too. again. No. My social is in a safe deposit box. I do know that. Fire but proof? it's not, I think so. It's supposed to be fire proof. My mom has it somewhere for me. It's in her <laughs> safe deposit box. I just remember starting a job. And being like, oh my god, I don't have my, my social security card. Yeah. And then her sending it to me, and then me having to send it right back because she didn't trust me to take yeah, care of it yeah, myself, yeah, which yeah. honestly is a very nice mom uh, move. Will, a disappointing end to the regular season for the Memphis Tigers as they fell to FAU and certified mm. themselves as having to win the AAC tournament in order to go to the NCAA tournament. Your thoughts, your feelings coming out of Sunday? We're going to have to beat them again. <laughs> I mean, it's either going to be. I just watching it, man. I just UAB may shock a lot of people, but I, I see us either playing SMU or depending on what the, I hadn't seen the bracket yet. But I mean, either SMU or FAU. It is, if I remember correctly, Memphis is the five. They would play, assuming they beat either Wichita State or Rice. They would be, they would play UAB. You win that game, and you Lightly end up play USF, USF or. And then if you win that game, that could be a rematch with either FAU or SMU. Yeah, we're going to have to I, – I don't, I don't see a problem. I mean, obviously, you, I can say that now. I mean, Rice did just beat our head in this year. Um, but we're going to have to see them again, one of those two teams. Yeah. Well, it's one of those things where, okay, so you get either Wichita State or Rice. Likely Wichita State, but maybe Rice gets the upset, whichever. Wichita State, you beat twice. Let's say you make it through that game. You have to face UAB, a team that you showed quite literally your ceiling and your floor against in a single game. Yeah. And you now start getting into the 
they are college athletes. Their job is to play games. Yeah. But one of the hardest things about a conference tournament is you are playing back-to-back days. It takes you back to your high school days. There is no rest. What, what is the tired leg ness like in a tournament setting? Do you just go numb? Do you forget it? Or from your memories, like, do you really feel it? No, nah, you definitely can feel it. Yeah. I mean, and it's and it's and it's relative to every position. You know, if you're if you're a guard, your jump shot's not falling. They're short. If you're a big man, you know, jumping and being explosive for rebounds or trying to dunk the ball. I mean, it 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 goes away. But there are moments in the tournament where it's like you black out. You know, remember that pain cave I spoke about? Mm. And I remember the feeling like it was yesterday when we were down at UTEP. And Joe Jackson literally saved that conference championship game by himself. And the energy was wild. I mean, it was it was insane. He single-handedly won that game for us. And you forget about everything and you just play because it's like he needs our help. I mean, he really didn't because he really I mean, it was miraculous. I mean, it was it was I, it was indescribable the way the way he took over that game. But when you have moments like that, you you tend to forget the tiredness and the fatigue and and things like that. But the moments you don't and you have to grind it out, your legs are gone, jump shots aren't falling, you can't jump as high, you can't run as fast as you want. But that's the importance, you know, of having a a, a great strength and conditioning coach and yeah. you know a nutritionist on hand. You just rest, 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 rest. Even if you're not sleep. When you're playing, when you're an athlete to that caliber, you need to be in the bed. You don't even have to be asleep. You just need to be in the bed resting for at least 9 to 11 hours. It sounds crazy. But, like, as soon as the game over, get you something to eat, and you need to be in the bed. You need just, to just off of your feet. Just off your feet. Right. I, I, I remember, you know, because I'm, I'm something like an athlete myself. <laughs> I remember playing you baseball. Yeah, p- played baseball a lot back in the day. Was a three-time district all-star, four-time all star in the in the ballpark back when I was like five to twelve. And we just couldn't <laughs> you couldn't get in the pool in the summertime, right? Like that was the thing. Hey, don't get in the pool because yeah. you'll lose your legs and you're not gonna be able to play right. well. I've always wondered, you brought up the strength and conditioning coach. Is there any more strength and conditioning stuff going on now? Like once you get to this time of the season where you're now doing all of these tournaments, are you still doing uh, I mean, weights in, in, in running? Not necessarily weights. I mean, you probably could, depending on – I mean, you have to have a really good strength and conditioning coach who could probably program some routine maintenance stuff. Mm. But, like, foam rolling and, and stretching and mobility yeah. work, yeah, you, you, got, you got to be on top of that. As soon as the game is over, you got to sit down somewhere and you got to get a good stretch in, got to get a good foam roll in before you go to bed. Some mobility work. I mean, all that. Because when you sleep, all that stuff tighten up. First thing when you wake up, take a walk, get some steps in, some more foam rolling. Like I don't. It's it's a lot of people just you know they don't understand what it takes mm-hmm. to really take care of your body. And when you're beating on it that much, especially back to back to back to back, you gotta that maintenance gotta be there, man. You gotta take care of your body. You got to icing, all that stuff. If there's a, a sauna somewhere, yeah. You got to hit that after maybe maybe after the game. Don't do it a day of the game because you're going to be zapped. Same thing like a swimming pool. But you got you to gotta be able to take care of your body and do stuff like you do stuff like that. If there was one player on this year's Tigers team that you think is most likely to have the Joe Jackson moment, to be the team that rescues this team in a moment of trial and tribulation during the tournament, who would it be and why? Man, I just have to say – Man, I just have to. I, I mean, obviously, you know, they quote unquote history repeats itself. Mm-hmm. I, I'm just, I'm on roll with Quinterly just off the top of. Okay. Just because I, I, we've just seen him do it time after time. I mean, we could easily go with David Jones just because he's a, a bucket getter. You know, he can feel the ball, you know, he feel the rim up. But I just, <clears throat> I mean, I, I'd say one of those two. We see so often a team's. Trajectory in the tournament can be tied to its point guard. Yeah. It's why early on in the season when. JQ was playing so consistently well, yeah. you thought to yourself, oh, they have a legit point guard. That can yeah. bode really, really well in March. It's been a little bit more of an up-down, all-around situation for him since. But I'm with you because it, it does feel as if David Jones, duh. Yeah. Daquan Tomlin at this point, of yeah. course. Mm-hmm. So the real difference maker, the, the X factor, if you will, could be Quinterly. Yeah, and it, and it can. I see so many people still out there screaming, fire penny, fire penny. But it's like, 
I mean, yeah, he probably lose games that we need to win and stuff like that, but Penny has done nothing but excel since he's been here. Now, I know everybody's gripe with Penny is play calling and, and, and substitution patterns, but it's like, here's where the game of chess begins. When you got, I mean, this is where you have to start learning how to coach on the fly, quick hitters, you know, press breaks and stuff like that in, in these timeouts, these media timeouts that we're using because you're thoroughly scouted at this point. I mean, I, we don't have any more secret weapons or we're not, you know, it's, it's, this is where you start pulling your tricks out of the bag and you read into your, you know, you reach into your reservoir and just kind of, let me pull this out, let me pull this out. Because when you get to a tournament like this, everybody has your number. They know you, they know your personnel, they know what you do, they know your tendencies. Here's where you got to kind of get a little, you know, think outside the box and, and coach on the fly. Let's get into the penny piece of it because he had his radio show last <clears throat> night and mm -hmm. obviously coming off the loss to FAU there's a level of frustration you're the five seed in the yeah. AAC in a in a down I'm not even going to call it a down year for the conference the American has now changed to a place where we talked about it at the beginning of the year this was a conference that Memphis was supposed to at the minimum co-dominate with FAU, and they've had their disappointments of their own this season. Uh, but to finish fifth, there are a lot of people who have been critical of that, even though this is a team that won the AAC last season. Penny posted on Instagram, we talked about it with Gary Parrish yesterday, these two pictures, one of which being a sign that said, forget being perfect, be you, it's better, in which he said, uh, it will never ever be enough in some people's eyes, damned if you do or you don't. And the second picture was a picture of the AAC championship trophy from last year. He was asked specifically about these posts last night. We have the clip of his response. Let's take a quick listen. Penny, obviously, we got to see where these chips fall and then kind of reassess whatever. Um, but, for example, your, your post last night on Instagram, is that, what is that about? Is that perception from fans? Is that us as No, I laugh, I laugh at our city. I never talk about the media. You guys have a job to do. It's just, it's funny to me how guys are always talking about how I need to be fired. <laughs> man, I, I, I get it. But, man, well, I, I took this job because it was, it was as low as it had been. I don't need any sympathy from anybody. I gave up my retirement to come here and help the University of Memphis in the city, and I feel like I've done a great job. I know it's only a few guys, but I laugh at that, but what we've, what we've accomplished as a group, I look at it in, in four years. I inherited a group and went to the second round of the NIT, granted. The next group was an NIT group. So I really had four years to try to do what I've done. I feel like I've done pretty well. I'm not resting on anything, like I said. I want to be in NCAA tournaments, making it to the Final Fours. It just has to match. When you're putting teams together, 12, 13 guys every year, you never know when that's going to gel. And when we won early, it spoiled all of us. And then when you go the other way, it's just not, it doesn't, it's weird. I'm, I'm, I'm first to say we had some really bad losses at home and then take care of business, but the chemistry has to be there. It's not just about talent. So, fifth year for Penny Hardaway. Yeah. Where it stands now. <clears throat> What do you make of his comments? And is it fair for fans to, I, I hate, let me be perfectly clear. When we get into, oh, so-and-so should be fired. I just hate those conversations, period. Yeah. These are livelihoods. These are jobs. I'm not saying Penny Hardaway is hurting for finances in any way, shape, or form. This was not ever a job that he had to do for financial purposes. It was a job that he wanted to do, but also a job that he tasked himself with bringing Memphis back into being a perennial contender in college basketball so is it fair for fans to have the response and then on the flip side is it fair for penny to have the response to the fans i i think at some point <clears throat> obviously when people when you take when you take on a position like this you know memphis has a lot of history when you take on a position like this you understand what it comes with and i think penny knew that but i'm with penny i, I do think he should have an opportunity to defend himself because at some point, you're going to get tired of being, being picked at. You know, at some point, you're going to get tired of having folks pick you apart. Now, I agree we've had some really bad losses. We've had some, some super tough losses. But at the same time, I think Penny has done a great job since he's been here. Now, if we get to the conference tournament and we stink it up, then we're in trouble. You know, then it's kind of like, all right, you're going to start to see the smoke. But if we can make it out this tournament and, and, and get to the NCAA tournament somehow, I, I think Penny again will, will, will have done a great job. I, I just, at what point 
is a great job. At what point is not a great job? Obviously, mm -hmm. making out the conference tournament, people kind of freak out. But if we get to the NCAA tournament, what is considered a bad job? Is it a first round loss? Oh, Penny didn't do what he was supposed to do. Is it a second round loss? I don't think people that don't understand the game, they just, NCAA championship or nothing. What's well, like, it's incredibly hard to build a program. Look at Houston. It took I mean, how long did it take Houston to get back on top of where? I mean, it took a long time for that team to really just get back to. I mean, they, once Samson got there, they were back. Yeah, one, it one, took, it, Samson got there, and that's that's the coach, right? Yeah. Like it, I don't think Houston is the the best example to yeah. to use because again, once he got in, well, well, what when they, they hired. Samson in 2014, and their first trip back to the tournament was 2018. I so mean, it took four, four years? years. So I'm okay. not saying it's instantaneous, but yes, to your larger point, there is a clear path. And from 2014, or 2018, excuse me, 2019, they were in the Sweet 16. By 2021, in the Elite Eight, uh, that's the year they went to the Final Four, and then back in the Elite Eight in 2022. Okay, so I, I, two very valid points, but we got four years. Penny's been here five. We've been to the NCAA tournament, what, three times? Twice. Twice? Twice. Twice? Twice. Two years in a row. So, I mean, I, I, I mean, I think we need to give my man some grace. Now, I, they, again, there's still some legit gripes from people in the city. You know, he can't coach. He, his subbing pattern's bad and stuff like that. Or, you know, maybe it's the guys will recruit. I don't, it could be a lot of things that could be said, but it takes time to build a program, man. And I think Penny's doing a, a decent job. Now, this year will, will be a telltale sign of what happens. But I, I think if we can get out of this conference tournament and we can, eat, I mean, second round at least in the NCAA tournament, I think, I think he will have done his due diligence and, and, and has made some noise this year with the, the roster he's had. A good year for any men's basketball program, with the exception of four, maybe five, six, seven, depending on how you look at it, is a, a sweet 16 trip. Like, that's a great year for Agreed. everybody outside of, like, North Carolina, Duke, Kentucky. Right. Kansas, maybe Arizona, maybe UConn, maybe Michigan. But everybody else, a Sweet 16 run is a great run. And I think that that's the, the standard. We keep talking about this thing like, well, what more do y'all want from me? What more do fans want? What more do media members want from me? It's, it's that. You haven't done Penny Hardaway in the Memphis Tigers basketball program. Has it been that in a really long time? And again, with the, the history and the tradition and the pageantry of Memphis Tigers men's basketball, that is the, the goal and that is the, the standard. Now, Penny Hardaway, this goes to the success not being linear thing. Penny Hardaway, NIT tournament champion, uh, round of 32, Hell of a showing in the round of 64 game last year. It's like, okay, the step is supposed to come now. We think right. the step is supposed to come immediately following that. Just look at the, mm -hmm. the way the team has progressed the past three years. And that's not always how it goes. Sometimes right. you have a year like this thrown in there. Hell, maybe even two years like this thrown in there where your team is absolutely good enough to get to the tournament and good enough to win multiple games in the tournament. Just circumstances happen and you don't get it done. But – when that happens, fans are frustrated because, again, the standard is Sweet 16, right? I wanted John Beeline fired at Michigan. John Beeline, for those of you who might not remember, uh, NCAA runner-up, runner and then injuries just derailed his next season yeah. and a half, two seasons. Spike Albright got injured. Carlos Levert got injured, and they just weren't any good. They ended up losing to Ohio State in, like, a February match. I was like, yo, Beeline's out. They got to find a new coach. Later on that year, that was a Sweet 16 team, right? They pit it all together. So it's, it's nobody knows really when that switch gets flipped, when they can pit it all together. It's just sometimes they flip the switch and they put it all together at the right moment, at the right time, and good things happen. The Tigers, unfortunately, got to win the tournament, the American to get into the big tournament. But, like, the goal is still there. You can still get to the Sweet 16. You're still going to be favored in every matchup you play in the American tournament, right? If you go out there and just do the things that people have been asking you to do all season, which has simply been beat the teams you're supposed to beat. Right. If you go out there and do that, you find yourself into the NCAA tournament and you're just as good with a top five scorer in David Jones as anybody else in the tournament who can go out there and at least win a game. Win a game in the tournament, get to a Sweet 16, God forbid. All is forgiven. We're going to forget about this entirely. The problem is... 
they have not beaten the teams they're supposed to beat. So and they have not that is proven. a frustration is, with Penny Hardaway and the Memphis go. Tigers. Exactly. And, of course, of course you can look at the Caleb Mills injury. And, of course, everything that happened with Malcolm Dandridge late in the season and his hovering investigation or whatever it may be. Right. Um, but the fact of the matter is this team has to win four games in four days to go to the NCAA tournament. So we're even having a conversation of, okay, now they're in it. Can they make a run to the second weekend? This is all speaking in hypotheticals, but I did want to end on one positive because you did identify a play from the Memphis FAU game, despite things going in the second half of that game for the Tigers. This was early on, right. and it particularly highlighted – pretty solid defensive rotation yeah. for Memphis. So right. let's throw it up. This is from Memphis FAU on Saturday this past weekend. What did you see from this play? I just – I mean, I, I, I preach about chemistry and, and, and playing together. I mean, just this particular play, I saw it, and then I hit CJ immediately. I mean, it was just solid help defense right there, especially when, you know, you got the big man. Both of them were just eating us alive during a game and that right there is is commu- that, that that's that's trust mm-hmm. that build trust that 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 lets everybody on the team know hey like i i got your back like i'm i'm there for you you know what i'm saying you know brown was helping they're trying to i don't know what penny was calling maybe it was a soft trap or just help defense yeah. or if we just hedging I, I don't know what we're doing because he didn't get out there quick enough but the fact that we have the help defense back there to get the ball out to get a stop go in the transition I mean, it's just – that's just textbook, man. And I think if that, that's, some, that's stuff we got to kind of rely on throughout the tournament. Throughout this next tournament. Yeah. And for the Tigers all season, transition offense has been, frankly, their only easy offense in any yeah. game. And that's when they flow the best. Yeah, man. I, we got to get stops, man. We got to make stops. We got to get stops and just – we got to play together. I, I, I will continue to scream and scream and scream at that. The chemistry has to be there, and that's incredibly hard to do, you know, with with, with 12 new guys every single year. I mean, I mean, even this year, we're losing five, six seniors. We're going to have to do it again next year. And it's just like, golly, bro, like the kids. And the, I, it's a whole nother conversation. I just, well, for this week, we will tell them. Play together, see yeah. what happens. Yeah. Tigers, AAC Trust tournament begin on Thursday. We will see who they play after tomorrow's UTSA Rice game. Will, thank you as always. We will see you next week. Oh, Hopefully, yes. Are we doing something food wise next week? Hold on, For stop the, the music. Tournament? Stop the music. Live production meeting. Yeah, love doing it. Adjourned. These. Because we didn't go to like the freaking eating. meeting Thursday. We don't know if it's a mega show or not. I just realized mm. that. It is a mega show. It is. If you read your email. Oh, you know I'm not reading I know. That. So I'm going to read you the so email. So it's, it's a mega she, show. She hit you with the per my last email. Breaking the, per my last email. It wasn't my last email. It was Darnell's last email. Per that email, though, breaking Grind City Media News for all listening. And nothing, the, the details have not been ironed. Well, but I believe, right I believe that it will be a mega show Thursday, Friday next week. So it will be us. And Gary Parrish, who will be off and about because he is the Wait, Gary's gonna be able to, busiest man I thought in the Gary world. Was gonna be... He might join via Zoom. He okay. wants to pop in, pop out kind okay. of thing. And gotcha. then the Vernon show will start earlier than normal. And we will all be out of here before the first round games begin on Thursday abroad. And then the first round games are here in Memphis on Friday. So could we get, I think. would you mind coming in Thursday or Friday? Next and, Thursday. Yeah, next Thursday or Friday and cooking on show. What would you need? I don't. I, I got don't. an air okay. fryer. We'll figure. We'll figure this uh, out. We'll, we'll, we'll work we'll, some we'll, details. We'll, we'll, I have we'll a crock pot. Ooh. I have an air fryer. I have a toaster. Okay. But my toaster's air from fryer. like 2016. Air I don't fryer. trust fire hazards right toaster. now. I'll tell you why after a quick break because I watched a terrifying fire scene on The Sopranos last night that I cannot stop thinking about. It'll be TV Tuesday. Will, thank you as always for joining us. We will see you next week for March Madness officially on the other side. CJ and I will talk about what we are watching, what we want to watch, some new shows coming out this week. We got the ratings for the Oscars. They're going to try to tell you that they're good. I don't really think that they are. People don't like award shows anymore more except for me apparently and we'll talk about the automatic qualifiers for the ncaa tournament thus far more tournament action to play tonight what we are looking forward to when we come back hey 
Grizzlies fans, turn your stadium excitement into betting action at Southland Casino Hotel. As a proud sponsor of the Memphis Grizzlies, Southland brings you more gaming action than ever before. Step onto our massive casino floor stretching more than two and a half football fields. Slot enthusiasts can enjoy more than 2,300 machines from penny slots to high limits and play the hottest games like Aristocrat, Dollar Storm, Cloverlink, and Lightning Cash. Table game aficionados can feel the thrill of the felt with 50 live table games. From three card to black Jack match, we're ready to deal you in. Plus, don't miss Stadium Gaming for an interactive digital experience. And for high rollers, our high limit room is calling your name. Go big on six high limit blackjack tables or spin one of our 54 high stakes slot machines. Throw in eight delicious dining options and a 300 room high rise hotel, and there's plenty to keep you going. At Southland Casino Hotel, the gaming excitement never stops. Must be 21 plus, play responsibly for help quitting. Call 800 522 4700. We know there's only one team you want to watch, and Valley Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments live. Valley Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Valley Sports and streaming on the Valley Sports app. Valley Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. Sauced by Will Smith is taking the championship taste of FedEx Forum. Come enjoy your favorite lineup of sauces on traditional and boneless wings the next time you see the Memphis Grizzlies play. All of your favorite sauces, including the famous Garrick sauce, are now available as you cheer the home team on. Visit Sauced by Will Smith inside FedEx Forum at your next Grizzlies game or come visit us anytime at our location in South Haven, Mississippi. Championship sauce, championship taste. Come get sauced today. Jordan Adams, a.k.a. Cheeseburg. We had to get on this weight, man. That boy, that, that man, he, man, his body fat was, I want to say about a good 25% body fat, man. That boy, that was riding all outside. You think he likes you calling him Cheeseburg? I don't think he appreciates that. I don't think he appreciates yeah, that. Well, he was my rook. I get to call him whatever. That's my rookie. So what? The Chris Vernon Show, presented by Caesar Sportsbook, live weekdays at noon on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Students, get back to the grind and cheer on your Memphis Grizzlies at FedEx Forum. Don't miss out on our exclusive student ticket program presented by Big River Steel. Get affordable tickets for all the major showdowns, including matchups against the Lakers, 76ers, Nuggets, and more. Sign up today to get alerts about this exclusive ticket deal at grizzlies.com slash students. TV Tuesday. You know what show we should be watching, CJ? The Crown, so that we can make sure that we are as tippity toppity up to shape on all things Kate Middleton. From Where does William Kate related. come from? Like Kate was in the last season of The Crown, right? Yeah. So the last season, okay. of the, the final season. Fill of me the in Crown. on where, where she comes from. One, I do think the last season of The Crown was maybe the most telling, or provided the most telling moment of the whole series, which was the fact that Queen Elizabeth did not feel comfortable transferring over the monarchy to Charles because I think she thought everything would go to hell in a handbasket. And what has happened since Queen Elizabeth died, everything has gone to hell. Really? Like, that woman was holding so this thing together did, with glue. That's why she didn't and I think pass she, it off. You know, they say some people have the urge to live, like, long periods of time. They say for older people, the number one thing, or I guess the two biggest things when you are old, is companionship and having relations that, like, people who check on you, people who you communicate with daily just to keep those, like, social wheels working in your brain. Yeah. And the other is to have a purpose. And so often older people no longer have a purpose, so they die earlier, whether it be they don't have a job or something to work for or look forward to, whatever. I think Queen Elizabeth lived as long as she did because her purpose was understanding, oh my God, the monarchy is at stake because without me, None of these hooligans are in any position hooligans. to run things efficiently. Hooligans. That's a pot of rubbish now. You can't be calling Charles a hooligan, pit, can pit. you? Is it? Is it it's a bunch of puppycock if you <laughs> ask me, CJ. Is he that bad of a, a, a person in charger? Like, he's a, I guess he's a leader of the family. Is he that bad as leader you of the know, family? Weirdly enough, I got in some arguments with people. My takeaway from the crown, I think he was a philanderer, obviously, and 
had a relationship with Camilla, who is now the queen, and he was awful to his first wife, Princess Diana, and a much documented like destruction of her entire existence, which led to her untimely death. Um, but I do think Charles, if like if you take those pieces out, which is a very large part of the pie to take out of his personality, he was a pretty progressive royal. Like, he was very interested in trying to push the monarchy into a more, like, forward-thinking era. There's so much, um, like, archaicness that comes with the royal family. And he was focused on, like, social justice causes and trying to help the monarchy understand all the bad that they had done and maybe find, like, a light path forward. But no one ever can focus on that because he was just, like, a POS who cheated on Princess Diana and ruined her life. Understandably so. That said, the queen, historically, allegedly, if you're taking the crown, which is not a history book, but does give you some clues along the way, uh, the queen didn't think that he would do a good job. And so at, the time, at a time when she had the opportunity to step away and start the transition, she held on for dear life until the very end. And now look where we are. And like, I feel bad talking. This man is currently dealing with cancer himself. Like, the king has cancer. So he's not working right now. Prostate, right? Yes. Get it checked, everybody. Everybody. Everybody prostate, get checked. And apparently there's, not to like double cancer, not to take away from the importance of prostate cancer. All cancers are, are important. If you go to breast. <laughs> all cancers if are. If you go. No, I was going to colon cancer. Oh, yeah. Get Have that checked also. Have you followed this recently? Yes. There was like a huge uptick yes. in younger people having colon cancer. Sometimes, younger, yeah. yes. It's like shot because you don't get colonoscopies until you're in your fifties, and you can't get like your insurance will not pay for a colonoscopy unless you have dire, dire symptoms. Uh, but again, on the internet that is TikTok and elsewhere, this isn't just a TikTok thing. But a lot of people are sharing their stories on being younger and having colon cancer and something that you normally would ignore so if there is any blood in your poop go get checked that's, and, and, that's and you can facts. now from because i get my news like a real person on the sure. tv so one of these cn ms fox one of these told me that you can like the the way that they test for it now isn't the you know put the finger up there it is okay you can get your own stool sample they have kits oh, that you can fun. use now so it is a much more uh, convenient sort of process back to the royals back though. to the royals yes and the would you would here. you describe anybody as a wanker all and of this, them all of them are wankers all of them. look at the camera and tell the brits that all of them are wankers the royal family is a bunch of wankers oh except oh, really, you ready for me to really piss them off yes except for harry who, wow. in his marriage to Meghan, wow. left, saw the writing on the wall. But if you really want to go... No, I'm not going to do it. Let's go. No, Let's go. I want to go there. Is Harry... It has always been speculated. Oh, Harry's somebody else's. Maybe. Alleged. So, alleged, alleged. Like when you think, like, oh, how could William be exactly like his father? Uh, genetics, baby. <laughs> Maybe there is a gene after all. Why would Harry be so different? Like, he is his mother's child. That's what everyone always says. Oh, Harry is Diana's, like... Uh, likeness and mm. personality likeness and he got away but they don't like that so as, mm. as somebody with siblings right things you're in the same house you're experiencing the same sorts of things and everybody has a different interpret not different interpretation but a different thought about it that's just how we are right like if i see this happen then I'm going to do this other thing. My brother might do something else. My sister might do something completely different. And it feels like they were both in that situation. Harry and William were both in that situation. And Harry looked around as a kid and said, you know what? If it ever gets like this with me, I'm not doing this. And William looked around and said, you know what? I can make this work. This is going to be good for me. I can, I can do this. And mm -hmm. so that might be why they handle being royals in different to. ways. Yeah, and he's like because and there's the a difference. Yeah, there's a difference in the two, right? Yeah, the, the crown oldest, passes to William. Right. Harry's never gonna see that thing, right. so he's like, "Yo, I'm I'm out. Why would I stay around?" And that for, was for one this? of my favorite things about the crown was showing uh, Queen Elizabeth's sister Margaret and how her life was impacted by being number two. Like that's just part of the. How family was it impacted? Drama. Wait. I mean, like she went through quite the relationship problems of her own. She got a divorce and it was a whole ordeal she wanted to marry a divorce her love of her life was a divorcee and they would not allow her to marry 
that man and it like it ruined her it wrecked her and just constantly having to be in the shadow of queen elizabeth i mean she lived what is portrayed as like a very party filled life a very social life um but she was a massive alcoholic and smoked until the very end and it ended up leading to her death so back on yeah, sure. the person in charge what's his name charles sure. is that the, the the person they call king over there um back back to him mm-hmm what would you do in this situation if you were him? Because clearly, this has been a big misstep for that it's, family. You no, know, here's the problem. It's okay. past the point of no return. So because what do you do? Because if you're him, if Eliz- like Queen Elizabeth had things so... Queen Elizabeth had people running scared. Like, you did not defy her. She set the rules. You followed them. This is the way it is. You don't like it. Tough luck. You were born into this life. You get a lot of privilege that it comes, a lot of privilege that comes with being a member of the royal family. You will act accordingly. At this point, everything's off the walls. Like, it's uh, cats out of the bag. If you, I don't know what the British saying for cats out of the bag is, but meow meow, they're out. Anyway, there's your, there's your royal news any number news, two. Are you news? watching anything right now? Uh, any news on Kate? No, since no we not started. since nothing, we started. Nothing on Kate. I don't Great. think so. Also, I meant to say this earlier in the show. I need to ride around in my car with my spouse a little bit happier. I've never seen, and we always do this, like spouse picks that we, we put in the tabloids. Uh, we always make it like, oh, they are miserable. Right? Remember Russell and Sierra had that picture? Uh-huh. Uh, ben Affleck and mm-hmm. Jennifer uh, Lopez have had a couple pictures in the car where it's like, oh, something must be going on. The Kate and and William picture, it's like, oh, stuff is happening here. It's like, oh, they're just riding in the car. Nobody's smiling. Who's smiling in the car? Am I watching Not anything? Me. I'm watching uh, all of my all of my sitcoms are back. Oh. So I'm still yeah, watching back. Abbott. Great episode this, this past week. We're behind. Week. Um, it's really, really good. Uh, tackles uh, schools named after racist people. It's pretty funny. <laughs> um, making my way through the neighborhood, which... Uh, I've told you this. I'm, I'm telling you again. I know. You and Chris are the white couple that lives next door. Y'all have got to watch it. Okay, now, it makes now me happy. I like, really y'all have, y'all like have got to too. watch it. It makes me happy to see y'all on TV every day. Because I think to myself, oh, that's what it would be like if we were neighbors with Chris and Jessica. Um, also making my way, I think it's the last season of Bob Hart's Abishola. Love that show. So I'm watching that as well. And we started our throwback show. Started Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Oh. My wife, I watched Brooklyn Nine-Nine when it was on. My okay. wife didn't. She would be in the room. She wouldn't really watch it. And so it wasn't a show that we watched together. But we're watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine together. And it is great. It is wonderful. The the dryness of Captain Holt, R.I.P. to the homie, with the uh, shenanigans that are going on around. Superb comedy. I love it. That has been on our list for a long time. No, we never watched Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Okay, so forget, forget <laughs> that the, the, the neighborhood is so good. I need you to watch it. You got to watch both. They're 30 minutes. About 30 minutes, I mean, with commercials and you everything, you're 24 minutes. You don't as we continue to watch this. Do you know how behind I am? I haven't been able to start Shogun. I haven't been able to start uh, The Regime. I still haven't watched Mr. and Mrs. Smith, which is actually on my list possibly to do today the problem is along with watching the sopranos which we are on season five we just finished episode 11 of the fifth season last night it is like it's all a dream and i just want to say my favorite episodes of television are not it was all a dream episodes like surrealism it it reminds me so much did you watch the last season of barry yes it reminds me of the surrealist i think barry and um bill Hader took a lot of inspiration from this particular episode of the sopranos it is very like truman show ish you're watching yourself on a tv there is one real part in it and i won't well at this point if you haven't watched the sopranos one of his girlfriends who's been like a long time girlfriend at this point yeah a gumar if you will this gumar who was married to it does but it's not this gumar who was with one of the men that he killed uh valentina for those of you who have watched the show Um, She accidentally lights herself on fire. She's cooking on the stove. She's trying to convince Tony to go on like a weekend trip to Antigua, funny enough, which is where Chris and I (laughs) won our trip from the silent auction for our longtime listeners. Um, And she's cooking like a robe and the sleeve of the robe catches on fire. And next thing you know, she is up in flames. She is completely incinerating. And Tony has to like 
smush her out with a blanket. I don't know what the, what's the official wording when you smother. smother. She's smothering, uh, he's smothering her with a blanket to try to get the fire to stop. But the way that I will never cook in a robe again. The Sopranos could save my life unintentionally. I will never have long sleeves while cooking over a stove ever again in my life because it was so scary how fast it happened. And now she's in the hospital and she's like burned on half her side. And I think she has brain damage and she lost her hair. And Tony Soprano now is stuck paying for his gumar because he feels guilty because he was over there and he claims he was going to break up with her, but they're never going to break up with them. But we're trying to see if Tony and Carmela are going to get back together. And he fell asleep, like, or not fell asleep. He woke up on the phone with his estranged wife at the moment. So that's the relationship that we're diving into. But these are the lessons that I learned from what the What happened Sopranos. to the therapist in her situation? Still Did she there. She, did she tell Tony about the guy? No, never told Tony that she got raped. Oh, no. no. That was one of the most impactful episodes of the entire series thus far. People have such good things to say about the fifth season, and it's been good, but I actually think last season was better, as was the third. So I'm waiting. There's two episodes left in the fifth season, and something tells me that things are going to get a lot, spicy. A lot of those HBO shows two change in yes, two drastically. episodes, right? Like Dexter Trinity Killer was like, okay, this is a cool little storyline, fine. Yes. And then the last five, ten minutes pop off of the season. It's like, oh my gosh, this might be one of the greatest seasons yes. ever. The Red Wedding season right. of Game of Thrones, where to from throne heads, I don't know what we call them. Everyone I call them dies. Heads. Well, like, they, they rave about that season, and when you ask them why, it is the way everything mm -hmm. culminates to that mm -hmm. one thing happening at yeah. the very, very end. I think the HBO shows uh, mm -hmm. did, maybe still do, a really good job of that. I think Barry had some of yep. that, particularly in the, the very last episode of Barry, yes. where it's all hell is breaking loose, yes. where everything has led to this one um, moment I think mm -hmm. is is really good. I agree. And I said Dexter HBO. That's Dexter's Showtime, not HBO. Yeah. That's uh, Showtime. But uh, like I, we still haven't done The Wire. But something would tell me that it, the Secession was very similar. Although, and they also do a good job of having like one episode in the middle of the season that is really massive towards the plot, which of course helps move things around. Um, but I am reading a book because like you did your video games on TV Tuesday, oh. um, I technically read my books on a screen, so we can call it a part of TV Tuesday. I'm reading this book called Bright Young Women. And I just finished a book called Hello Beautiful, which took me a while to get through. And it was about, it was like a family drama, but it was funny in the acknowledgements. Guess who the author thanked? Hel author of Hello Beautiful thanked Kate Middleton. Draymond Green. Who? Draymond Green. There is... The Draymond? The Draymond Green. And it was more the Golden State Warriors. She did a lot of basketball research. One of the main characters is a physiologist for the... He ends up being a physiologist for the Chicago Bulls. And so there was a necessary level of, like, basketball understanding. And she said her favorite part of research for the book was sitting down and watching Golden State Warriors games with her husband and their two children. And she thanked, obviously, Steph Curry for being so fun. And then it was like, and Draymond Green for being Draymond Green. And I'm like, here's this like Oprah's book club book. And the acknowledgement is thank you, Draymond Green, for being Draymond Green. So that made me giggle a little bit. Um, but I've moved on to a book that has captivated me, which is why I can't watch shows during the afternoon when I have some time by myself, like a Mr. and Mrs. Smith. It's about, it's like based on a real life story of America's first celebrity serial killer who targeted sororities in the 1970s. And I've just begun, and the it is based in uh, Florida State, and it's a sorority at Florida State. But something I had no idea, did you know Florida State was considered the Berkeley of the South in the 70s? Is it, like it not was the still? I, I, is it? I think so. It's like Florida, a hippy-dippy of Florida? Yeah, Florida State is that. Miami is the... Really? The, Miami is the prissy, clean-cut, private school. Yeah. Oh. Florida's what? where the Roughnecks are supposed to go, which makes the what okay. they were doing with the U and the football program, why football probably will never be as good at Miami ever again. Interesting. Why they, the, the university fought back against it so much because I that's just not their that Because image. they're still using at Florida State, like they still use the chop and they still use Seminoles. Yeah, right? I guess, do they still use the chop at yeah, Florida State? I, I think they I, do. I, Think, I'm not sure if they do or not. Well, but this they, version they of Florida State that's Seminole depicted in the book, person. it would not fly. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, it's a serial killer who comes in and like targets, and the assumption is that it's at multiple sororities across the country, and I think it's going to be an indictment on the justice system and police departments and investigative departments because they let this guy fly for many, many times. But that's where I am at. And 
I will watch The Neighborhood. Now I have to. This is this is the problem with us Americans. As the it's always about us. And now you've told me that Chris and I are the neighbors in in the neighborhood. And now I need to know what that means. It's great. Now, now I need now to know listen, what that listen, means. Now listen, 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 listen. Listen. We can it get rid of. Than... We can get rid of the. Got to watch the first season. First okay. season is great. All the seasons are great. Get rid of the first season where everybody's getting to know each other because we already know y'all. Your relationship. Yours and Chris's relationship to me and my wife, we are like season three of The Neighborhood. Shit is just humming along at this point. <laughs> it is superb. Things are happening. It's so good. As, Y'all, as you're gonna, you might get mad and be like, oh, we're not this corny. You are. You are, and we love it. We love it you guys. at least better than the guy on Abbott Elementary? Like, that one would hurt my feelings. Oh, he's so... What's his he's name? So Jacob? He's so adorable. I love him. He's great. He's wonderful. I just don't want to be him. No, 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 and no. I don't we're want not, this to be him. No, we're, we're not that relationship. Okay, we're not in that we're not, category. We're, we're, our relationship isn't that relationship where okay. I would be Gregory, I guess, in that situation. Gregory, no, yes. I'm not them. Yes. I'm absolutely uh, Calvin. Okay. I'm Calvin Butler, and you guys are the neighbors next. Like, okay. it's, it's perfect. Fantastic. You guys, you guys aren't going to like it because it's not super flattering. That's but fine. it's exactly what you guys I are. I sent you a TikTok yesterday. I think I sent it. If I didn't, I need to. On um, white people lingo and how we should just be comfortable and stop appropriating, like, other language. Because we have such bangers of statements. So on that, I'll say, check you later, CJ. Pretty sure check you later started off oh my with my God. people. I'm pretty sure it did. Tough scene. Tough scene. <laughs> it's tough. Oh, I started Spider-Man too. Okay. Good game so far. We gotta go talk to our new social person. We have a new member of the team to go chat with. Uh, in the show then. All right, Grizzlies Wizards, be there or be square. I'll be there. Again, paper airplanes, Tyus Jones tribute video. Who of the Grizzlies could have a big night? Only you can find out with your own eyes tonight at seven o'clock here at FedEx Forum. We'll be back tomorrow to talk about it. Everybody have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. It's gonna be beautiful outside. Yeah, outside in the sun. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Didn't think Chiefs retaining uh, Jones would win, but it won by like a landslide, 40%. I think they gave him too much. You think they gave him too much, really? But you saw how valuable that dude is. They lose to the Lions week one and look like they can't rush anybody. That's true. And, and they, they also saw that week one against the Lions and so whatever.